Hello and welcome to another video where this time we're going to take a look at image presentation. We're going to start by adding a white matte border or mount to this picture and then we're going to add a realistic wood frame effect. Right, let's make a start with the mount. It's over to the layers panel where we're going to duplicate the background layer. So using command J or control J, that's command J, control J. Next, we're going to head up to image down to resize and across to canvas size. And it's here we can see the document size that I'm using. It is a full size image. It is 45.7 megabytes in size. There's the width in inches. There's the height in inches. But of course, you might be using centimeters, millimeters, or perhaps even pixels. Just let me untick this for the moment. Now, for this size image, I want to add a two inch mount right the way around the image. Of course, if you're using a smaller file size, you'll need to use a smaller dimension for that mount. So what you can do with this is if you tick in the relative box, this is where life can be made much easier. And particularly if you're using centimeters, millimeters, or perhaps even pixels, because with a two inch, I just need to put in two. Now, if I'm still using inches for a smaller size image, and perhaps I need it just to be, say, an inch and a quarter, for example, I just need to put in 1.25. So rather than adding the dimensions in, it's much easier if you just tick the relative. Right, let's come back with this. I'm going to put in two inches. Anchor point, make sure it is right in the center. Canvas extension color. If we click here, you can see we've got uh, these foreground, background, white, black, or gray, or other. I'm going to go for white for the moment, but I don't want it to be a stark, brilliant white. So instead, let's click in the window. Now with this, there, you see there's our bright white. I'm just going to drop it down a notch or two, taking it into this area here. And you can see there was the current. There's the new. It's got a little bit of a pinky hue to it. So let's just lift this up going to take it into the yellows, perhaps something like that would be pretty good. Let's click OK to that. Right, let's click OK. Reversing out a little bit using Command 0 or Control 0 to do that. Now, if you look over on the layers panel, the mount has been added to the background layer. If I just switch this off, you can see there's the checkerboard background on layer 1. Now, what I want to do is I want to put the mount on top of the image. I want it to be floating on top. So come over to the padlock. We're going to click on that. That has now unlocked the layer. It is now called layer zero. Clicking on layer zero, we're going to lift it up. We're going to look for that solid black line, which is just a beard above layer one there. We can now release it. Coming down to layer one. Now press and hold down command or control. Notice the way your cursor has now got a dotted square line. That means we can make a selection and there is our selection. We're still working on layer zero. So all we have to do now is press delete on the keyboard. Pressing delete has now removed the image. So now the mount is floating on top of our image. If I just switch it off, there it is. There's our mount. We've got a selection. Let's make the most of it. Let's come up to select. We're going to go to inverse. So now we've got a double row of marching ants. That means we're working on our mount. We're now going to come up to filter. We're going to come down to noise. We're going to come across to add noise. The reason for this is that color we've just added is solid white. There is no texture. There's no grain. There's nothing in it. So we want to give it a little bit of texture. Now I did say a little bit and that looks like rather a lot. So let's just drop this right back into this sort of region here. And uh, yeah, Gaussian, monochromatic. No, let's switch that off. Let's have a little bit of color with this. And it's sometimes easier. Bring your cursor over the text itself. Now we can move it up. It's much easier to do it this way than use that slider, particularly when we're down into the low numbers. This area here looks pretty good. Just clicking down, there's the before, there's the after. Let's click OK to that. Back up to select, back down to inverse. So now we've got one row of marching ants. And with this, we're going to add a stroke line. Why, I hear you say, because at the moment it is just, well, it's just like a hard edge. There's nothing to it. And adding the stroke line is going to help give the impression that it's actually been cut. I'll show you what I mean once we've done it. Let's head up to edit, down to stroke outline selection. Got a full pixel width, uh, that should be okay. Let's click in the window. Let's select a gray color, something like this, perhaps just a little bit light. No, back where I was, 
there looks pretty good. Let's click OK to that. Location, we're looking at inside. And for, yep, I'll tell you, what, I'm going to take this up into five pixels. Of course, if you're using a smaller file size, you'll need to reduce this. So it might take a little bit of experimentation, but uh, it's going to be well worth it. Click on OK. Now using Command D or Control D to remove the selection. I've got the hand tool, so I just need to press down on Command or Control. Let's zoom into this area here. We're in it 100%. And you can see there's the texture we've added. There's that stroke line around the outside. And you can see the way it gives the impression that the mount has now been cut. Right, let's go back out to fit on screen. Now for the next stage, we're going to add a wood frame effect. And to do that, we're going to go back up to image, going back to resize, coming back across to canvas size. Now with this, I want to add an inch frame right the way around the image. Still working with relative, we're going to put in one for the width, we're going to put in one for the height, anchor point in the center. Incidentally, you might need to experiment with these figures, once again, depending on the document size that you're working with. Canvas extension color, this time you'll notice it's grayed out, but that doesn't matter. Let's click on OK and let's reverse out again using Command 0, Control 0 to do that. We're now going to come across to the toolbox. We're going to pick up the rectangular marquee tool. Right, let's zoom in a little bit. I'm going to use spacebar, now Command or Control. So popping into this area here would help if we kept the picture on the screen. Right. Clicking on the top, dragging it down and over like this. Let's lift it up so it's just onto the mount area. That will do nicely. Next, we're going to put the selection onto a new layer. So coming up to this little icon, this is to create a new layer. Layer 2, let's just double click. We're going to call this what it's going to become, which is the frame. Heading over to the color. We're going to click in the window here and I'm going to bring it into this sort of region and just lifting it up and looking for the browns. There they are there. Just going to go for a slightly darker brown. Doesn't really matter because we can change the brightness of this and I'll show you that and how we can do it just a little bit later. Right, let's click OK to that. There's our foreground color. Now to put our foreground color, into the selection. Yes, you can pick up the paint pot, but there's also a really good shortcut. To put the foreground color into the selection, use Alt Backspace, that's Alt and Backspace on a PC. It is Option Delete, that's Option Delete on a Mac. And there it is, we have now filled it with that foreground color. Next, we're going to be using this selection. So let's come up to Filter, Noise, coming down to Add Noise. This time we need to add a little bit more than this. So let's bring it up into this sort of region here, 34. We're going to tick monochromatic this time. This is going to be the start of our wood grain effect. Right, let's click OK to that. Let's head up to filter, blur, coming down to motion blur. And with motion blur, the important thing here is the angle. Make sure this is set to zero degrees. Distance I've got here looks pretty good. That's uh, 61. I like how that's looking. If you drop it down, the wood grain effect becomes more prominent. If you lift it up the other way, you can see the way it blurs it out. So I'm going to take it back to where we were, which looked good at, what was it, 61. Let's click OK to that. We don't need the selection anymore, so it's Command D, Control D. It is now nearly gone. Right, using Command 0, Control 0 to go out to fit on screen. Now it has gone. Okay, picking up the move tool, you can press V on the keyboard, will also give you the move tool. We're going to duplicate our frame layer, so using Command J or Control J. Let's bring our move tool over, clicking on this, we're gonna drag it, we're gonna place it down on the bottom. Right, using Command J, Control J again, we're now gonna lift it up into this sort of region. Coming up to image, we're gonna to go to rotate, and make sure you use rotate layer, it doesn't matter if it's left or right, but look, rotate layer, that's the important thing here. And click on 90 degrees, round it goes. We can now move this across into position. Command J, Control J, again, moving this across here. Right, let's pop in and take a look at our wood frame effect. Now, using spacebar, Command or Control, and we pop into this sort of region here. That looks pretty good like that. There's a few more changes we're going to make yet. If I just switch this off, 
you can see the way it really, as I said, realistic wood frame effect. That is how it would look if I cut it. There it is. There, that looks good. Now, what if you wanted to cut it at an angle? Well, we'll do it on the one side. We're not going to do it on the entire image. Then you can make your own minds up onto what sort of wood frame effect you want to use. We're going to put a layer mask on this layer here. Right, coming across to the toolbox, let's pick up the paintbrush. Now with the paintbrush, if I just right click for a second and I'm going to go back to my default brushes so I can show you exactly what we're going to do. Let's just pick up this one for the moment. There it is, that small brush. Okay, let's head down to tool option. Here, this is where you'll find the default brushes, but I prefer to bring my brush over the screen, right click in. Let's go to the drop down menu. I bet you can't guess where we're going to go. Yes, it's to the square brushes. Scrolling right down, the largest one is 24 pixels. So clicking on 24 pixels, now press enter or return to remove the panel. If you use the right hand square bracket, that's going to make the brush bigger. We're going to take it right the way up into this sort of region here. We'll do nicely, perhaps a little bit more. Next, heading down to brush settings. Now with brush settings, I'm just going to drop the spacing back to one and we're going to take the angle around to 45 degrees. There, there's our 45. Bringing it out over the image, something like this. I'm just going to press enter or return to remove that panel. In fact, let's close this down as well and just dropping this into position here. Now, if I bring this over to this area, going right into the corner, you can see we're right between the corner there on the inside and right on the outside just checking that clicking down there it is that's how we can actually cut it at a diagonal across there repeat it then to all the other three sides remaining there it is job done but i'm going to press h on the keyboard to give you back my hand tool zooming out to fit on screen using command zero control zero to do that we're now going to combine our frame layers into one layer Top layer highlighted, pressing shift on the keyboard. So press and hold down shift on the keyboard. Now click on the frame layer. All four sides are now highlighted. We can now head up to layer, coming down to merge layers. Now this is going to merge the highlighted layers only. We're now down to one layer. Right, for the next stage, we need to pick up the crop tool. Now with the crop tool and uh, any second now, thank you. If it does this, just cancel the crop. Now bring your crop tool over the image, dragging it right the way over like that. Now the reason for doing this is when we use the top width here, this is greater than the height, so we will be getting bits hanging over the edge. Just double clicking here is now going to crop and we'll trim off those excess edges. Just pressing H to give me back my hand tool. Right, let's give this frame a little bit of shape. We're going to head down to styles. Now with styles, come up to the menu here and we're going to go up to the top one. There it is, bevels. Let's zoom in. I've got the hand tool, so I just need to press command or control. Let's pop into this area here. In fact, let's go to 100%. That will do nicely. Right, bringing my cursor. Let's take a look at this one. This is the scalloped edge. Going to click on that. Now, sometimes this works a treat with this edge here. Other times you can be slightly out and you get this sort of look. Uh, not sure we'll be going with that one for this particular, but experiment. You know, that uh, cut edge there really does look good when it works with the scalloped edge. Trust me, it's only when you do it live in a video, it's not going to work. Anyway, try this one, which is just the uh, simple emboss. We've then got this one here, which has got more of a gloss to the top. Not so sure I like that one. This is just a flat edge to it. And just experiment, see which one works for you. Just taking a look at this one, let's pop over to the other side. Now, of course, it will depend on the type of image you're working with. There we've made it. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Perhaps we could go with that one. Or if we just come back to the rounded one, even that looks good. Once again, it really does depend on this type of, and the style of the image that you're using. I think we'll work with this one. So let's pop out to fit on screen using command zero, control zero to do that. Next, we're going to add a drop shadow. So back up to the drop down menu. Let's go to drop shadow. Now with drop shadow, I'm just going to come down to low. We're going to click on low and it's just telling me that the canvas size is smaller and you're not going to see the whole thing visible. Just click OK to that. 
coming over to layers. Now with layers, we've got this little FX indicating that a layer style has now been added to this layer. We're now gonna double click on this. That opens up our style settings. Drop shadow, if I bring my cursor out, we've now got the move tool and we've now got our drop shadow, which we can move around. Looking at the framework, the lighting is on the top. It is on the side here. So we need to have the drop shadow from the top and to the left hand side. So let's move it into position, something like that. Now that's quite a hard edge to our drop shadow. So I'm going to take the size up. The more we move this across to the right hand side, the softer that drop shadow becomes. And let's just lift this up into place like this here will do nicely right incidentally you can of course come to the size for our bevel and you can take the bevel up should you want to but i quite like that where it was and just taking it back to 21. right let's click ok to that now in the very beginning we created the mount for this and we put it on its own layer now i want to give a little bit of separation between the mount and the image itself we need to use a drop shadow but rather than going through that whole thing of layer styles, there's a nifty little workaround. Bring your cursor over the effects. Press and hold down Alt or Option. Holding down Alt or Option, clicking on that FX, dragging it down. You'll notice you've got a double arrow head and you can see the word effects there. Releasing it on layer zero and in it goes. Clicking on effects will bring up the layer styles. Switch off bevel because we don't need the bevel. It's just the drop shadow we're after. Bringing my cursor out, it's that move tool again. We can move it around. This time I want it from all four sides, so something like this. I'm gonna bring this in a little bit with our size, bringing our distance in as well, because I don't need it to be so far out. Pressing the space bar, now command or control. We can zoom into this sort of area here, and you can see if I just switch this off, you can see there's the drop shadow, just giving a little bit of distance between the mount and the image, just decreasing that just a touch more. There will do. There's the drop shadow as well showing on our mount. Let's zoom out to fit on screen, which of course is command zero, control zero, and click OK to that. Right, the frame. I want to make it a little bit darker. So let's come up to the adjustment layer. We're going to go down to brightness and contrast. Now when brightness and contrast opens, we're going to click on this square with that angled arrow. Clicking on that, we have now clipped it to our frame layer. This is where we can come to our brightness slider. We can make it brighter, giving it a nice pine effect. We can make it darker, giving it a nice mahogany effect. And if I just take this down into this region here, pick a tone, that's going to suit, or should I say that, you know, the light, the dark, which is going to suit your image. I think with this image, I want to make it a little bit darker, closing that down out of the way. There is our finished image. I'm going to right click. Let's go to a black background. I'm going to press tab on the keyboard. Go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe as there's plenty more videos to come. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.